when I was asked to speak at the TEDx event, I was thinking what should be the topic that I should talk about. And I realized it's easy for me and it's best for me to talk about my journey as an entrepreneur. And since this is uh, happening in Kandy, I was schooling in Dharmaraja for two years. And that was the fifth school I went to. And then I ended up my studies in DSN Lanka, where I spent about six years. I've been to six schools, traveling around the country. And uh, my mother is from Kandy, and my wife is from Kandy, and my sister-in-law is from Kandy. So I have a bit of roots here. Yeah. The company I founded 11 years ago today has become a multi-million dollar business. So what you see on this map are the clients that we work with around the world. It's basically primarily our business is providing digital marketing solutions to hotels and travel companies. What you see, the little dots here, are the clients that we work with today. I mean, we work with over 1,000 clients and completed about 4,000 projects in the last 11 years. I got a, over 100 amazing young people working with me, and we won so many awards. But what I'm going to talk today is not how big we are or what we won, but I thought I should tell you how I started and what I learned during the last 11 years as, a, as an entrepreneur. I started this business with a few of my friends at my parents' house in a spare bedroom. Just four or five of us working around a table. And then we decided that, this is back in 2007, for a digital business, Sri Lanka was not the best market then because Sri Lanka has better things to worry about. And especially when we, since we want to focus on travel and hospitality, that's not best for the industry as well. So we wanted to go international, working in a, in a spare bedroom. And we were successful because of the background I had before. Um, working with some international clients. So we ended up signing up with some of the biggest brands in the region. And that, that's how we first started into, in the international market. Because what we have learned is try the local market first and grow slowly and all that. But I wanted to do big things. And I think it's, it's, I don't know, it says that the people who are not built so big, like small people like me, they want to know big things. And like I like big cars going against what Nina was talking about. So I want to do big things. So where, I, where did I get this dreaming big and thinking big? Is actually by reading books. But let me be honest. I have not read a single English storybook yet not even when I was a kid, because I've been to a lot of rural schools and English not, but not the thing. I started reading when I was about 19, 20, because one of my friends wanted me to read. So I started reading about the life stories of people. I started reading books by Richard Branson. I started reading books by Obama. I started reading books by um, the book called Entrepreneur by the CEO of Mine International, uh, William Henneke. So they were talking about the biggest dreams that they had. For example, um, Branson once mentioned that how he was planning to open the travel agencies, airlines, and all of that when he was 16, and he made it. And Obama has written things about how he drove up hundreds and hundreds of miles just to talk to four people around a di dinner table. I was like, OK, these guys have done great things. And why not me? So this inspiration I got, and I had the passion, and I really want to sort of make things happen. I was not scared to dream big. Even people sometimes laugh at you. I really don't care. Because I am a true believer of that if you dream of stars, at least you'll end up in a coconut tree. You're above the ground. You're about 30, 40 feet high. That's great. The next thing I want to highlight is the, the most important thing is leadership. 
So I was searching what is the definition of leadership and I was watching a few videos and I came across with this quote from Simon Sinek. He defines leadership is not about being in charge. Leadership is about taking care of those in your charge. How beautiful that is. When we get someone to lead a team, when you get someone to manage a team, if you think the leadership is all about telling them what to do or just commanding them, no way. It's all about taking care of it, taking care of them and taking to next level. And one thing that we all need to understand is with the leadership, you get this important thing called responsibility. If you are a leader, you have no right to come up with excuses and say, I couldn't do this because he didn't do it. I didn't know about it. I saw it on the newspaper. You simply can't say that. You need to take the responsibility whether it's a company, whether it's a team, whether it's a country. You need to make sure you take the responsibility, which is the most important thing. And as a leader, you need to do what you say. You, need, you can't go back by, on your word. And I also believe that you need to be fair, and I believe that you need to have your favorites. But, you, but it's contradictory, but I, I still believe in it. What do you mean by having favorites, especially in an organization? You should have a fair ground for everybody, but you should treat people differently. What, I, what do I mean by that? You should pe treat people differently means you should reward people differently. If anybody performs well, give them more opportunity and reward them more. Because then it will motivate others as well. When you talk about the responsibility that I think everybody should learn the lesson of responsibility sooner. I learned my lesson when I was 16. It was in, in my school. I was the class monitor. And we were supposed to wash the classroom after school is finished. And the last session or the period, the teacher got about five minutes late. So I decided, OK, let's do it now. And everybody agreed. It's a small incident. We've done a lot of stupid stuff, but I don't think any of my friends remember this, but I remember this very well. So we decided to wash the classroom. We put a lot of water, and five minutes or 10 minutes later, the teacher came into the class. She can't have the class because it's full of water. She went back. So we're like, oh, OK, no lesson. We just have fun. And then came the section ahead. I came and asked, who decided to do this? I was scared like a rat. I, I didn't want to go and accept that it's my decision. It's me who decided to do it. No, I was hiding behind. Then my good friend, uh, his name is Dinesh. I'm not sure I have told him this. He went and tried to explain, and he got punished. Then he came to me and said, if you want to be a leader, if you want to take responsibility, if you want to show that you're, you want to move forward, learn to take responsibility. So I learned the lesson from him, which actually really, really helped me even to run this company. And the other thing I really want to highlight is you need to appreciate people. Every little thing you, they do, you need to appreciate people, and you need to celebrate every little victory you have. Sometimes we wait till we finish the journey to celebrate till we reach the destination to celebrate. There's nothing called destination. You need to understand to enjoy the journey and celebrate the journey itself in the little moments that you get. Otherwise, you will not have time to celebrate or appreciate people. The next one is about people. People are beautiful because they are not perfect. This is something I learned from my father. He used to tell me that no one is perfect. Try to see a little good in everybody. Because if you try to find mistakes and weaknesses of people and try to find the perfect people to become your friends, you will never have anybody. You will not even, even have yourself because you are full of mistakes and weaknesses. That's, that's what makes it beautiful. So I, I learned that you need to see good in people 
So I want us, all of you to look at this one. This is teachings from Buddha. It says, Asevana ch balanang panditanang to sevana puja ch puja niyanang eta mangala muttama. The meaning of that is that you, you associate with good people and you try to see good in them and try to respect the people, the good, good in people, because it makes you a better person. Because who you are is people who are surrounded, surrounded with. So what did I do? In my board today, I have two of my ex-bosses. So I have the respect for them, and they will tell me you know, what I have to do and give me the direction. So this really, really helps me. And you should always have people around you who can challenge you, who can tell you when you do something wrong, who can challenge you and say, look, what you are, the decision you're trying to make is wrong. I think it's very important for entrepreneurs because we have done something, we have achieved something little, and we're very aggressive, and we think everything we do is right. That happens to even leaders. So you need to have a set of people that who would always challenge you. One thing you can do is you can get married. There'll be someone who always challenges your decisions. <laughs> right? So I have this amazing team who would challenge me. And there was a time I used to sit with my graphic designers before they finished the job. I went and tell them, change this, change that, change this. And they were changing it. The, the guy is a poor, poor guy doesn't say anything. But then the project manager comes and tells me, Rajita, please don't do this. You are ruining it. So never go to a graphic designer ever again. I was like, OK, I'm really sorry. So I don't do that anymore. So if you do not give that opportunity for your team to come and criticize you and tell you what is right and what is wrong, you are not going to be in good shape. It's good to get criticized at home and inside your office rather than doing, getting it outside. And the other thing is you need to be a nice human before anything. You should be able to listen to people and understand them because they come with a lot of problems. Sometimes they ruin things. You really don't want to sort of, you know, get, get on them. You need to sort of understand why it happens. Because when you understand people, when you put them in a team, that team can do amazing things. There are decisions that you need to make as a leader. Maybe some people wouldn't agree. But try, what I try to do is I try to make it, it make everybody part of the decision. Because when you make them part of the decision, it makes life so easy, because it, they're part of it. So they will carry it for you. And the other thing is who you know and how they know you. We have worked with over 1,000 clients, mostly international. But trust me, I don't have a fully fledged sales team. I don't have any, anybody works outside Sri Lanka. All these sales we've got, all these clients we've got, is because of the good stuff we've done. It's all about word of mouth. So it's all about how, who you know and how they know, the, know, know, how they know you. Because if they know you as a person who delivers, that you are automatically getting, getting new stuff coming your way. Lastly, so what is the purpose of entrepreneurship? I was watching a video today by Jack Ma. So he's, he's in, in similar direction. It's not about making a lot of money. Because if you want to make a lot of money, there are other things you can do. You be an entrepreneur if you want to make a difference. If you want to make a difference in the industry that you're in. If you want to make a difference to, to, the, to the people whom you're working with. If you want to make a difference to the businesses who are your clients that you're working with. If you want to make a difference to you, not just because you really want to make money. So with that, I end my talk. Thank you very much.